Yes. So you mentioned a moment ago, uh, setting a renovation goal. In other words, what is it you want to accomplish with this property? Do you recommend setting that renovation goal before you go under contract, before you close? What through the, when, what's the timeline through the process that the rental estate investor should go through the renovation goal or establish the goal? Well, both actually. I think that in the process of you trying to determine whether a property is a deal, you got to have a good sense of what's out there in the marketplace uh, and compare that to what market value is. But once you've actually acquired a property, put it on contract, then you really then you really got to fine tune that goal and really make sure that it is that if you're going into the, pro uh, into the property looking to flip it, then you need to actually go out there and validate that, what the numbers are. And what is it that you need to do to this property in order to be able to get to that dollar value? So if you're looking to make 40,000 on that flip, well, you got to get out there and figure out what it is that you need to put in this property to get to that 40,000. Yeah. Um, you bring up a really, really good point because you know, with every property, at least as far as single family properties go, we always have multiple exit strategies that we can choose from, right? So for example, case in point is to what you're talking about, Van. I personally went and looked at a house last night at 6.30 PM. Uh, after my wife, Carol Joy and I just flown back in from Ketchikan, Alaska, time to go look at houses, right? So I went and looked. Well, my contractor had already been and looked. And if I'm going to flip the house and, and get top retail, it's going to take almost $30,000. Well, the numbers aren't going to work to do that. So my other strategy in looking at the property last night was, well, wait a minute, can I buy it subject to the existing note using the seller's mortgage and sell it on uh, rent to own and not touch the house? Can I just sell it out on rent to own and not do it? And when I went and looked, now I can get the numbers to work. We just got to negotiate with the seller for them to take our offers. So I just wanted to give a little color to what you said. Part of that renovation goal, knowing what your strategy, what your exit strategy want to be. It's always very helpful in my experience to have backup other exit strategies you can look at instead of just being pigeonholed into one. Uh, you know, like if my only exit strategy is I got to make this house look absolutely drop dead gorgeous and sell it retail in the multiple listing service. If I'm only looking at that exit strategy, I'm going to miss out on some deals. Would you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. And uh, it, it goes to show you experience of what you just said uh, goes a long way. Absolutely. I never go into any purchase uh, property without having multiple exit strategies uh, on that property, whether it's on the renovation side or whether it's on the actual acquisition itself and how to structure that. Like there's situations where I purchased property where for whatever reason, I got it, I gotten too far into for, for something, for some reason. And then I've had to transition into actually creating something, some other value. For example, finishing a basement, turning that into an in-law suite where I can rent the basement out and have and rent the other, the upstairs uh, separately, adding additional rental income. These are the types of things. Or if there's additional land on that property, sever it, selling that, that, that parcel of land, adding, uh, adding value to the whole transaction. Those are the types of things that you're talking about. I totally agree. You got to do that. You got to be you got to have uh, multiple exit strategies. Excellent. Mm -hmm.